Narcissists are the most entitled little people that you'll ever discover over the course of your lifetime. The idea they seem to subscribe to is everyone owes me something. Entitlement can look different based on whether this person has more overt or covert characteristics of narcissistic personality disorder. I want to talk about what the difference looks like very quickly, and then I want to go over a list of the top things that narcissists feel entitled to and what a narcissist feels you really owe them in a relationship. Sometimes it's hard to spot a sense of entitlement when you're dealing with a covert narcissist. The overt is much easier. They're cocky. They give off this false superiority complex and appear to have very high self-esteem. And the entitlement becomes clear as day. Do you know who I am? Why aren't you giving me these things? Do you know how much pull I have? Do you know the people that I know? I'm not waiting till this goes on sale. I'm not waiting till you're open. I'm doing all of this right now. You're going to give this to me. I'm not waiting. You are going to make an exception for me. I am the only one who matters. The obnoxious overt, (laughs) as I call them, made the entitlement issues quite clear. With a covert, it's definitely still there. They still have a very strong sense of entitlement, but coverts attack this a completely different way. Covert narcissists will typically act like underdogs, the victim, the poor, put-upon little folks who can't seem to catch a break. Something's always a catastrophe, right? Something's always wrong, awful, not going their way. I'm telling you, I have never met somebody more down on their luck than a chronic covert narcissist. And they say things like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need your help. You should help me. We're together. You're supposed to help me. I have nothing. You have so much. You have an overabundance. You should give this to me and let me have this. They let you know in so many ways they need something or want something. And it's your responsibility to provide them that. They'll say, well, if you loved me, you would do this for me. Or, well, that's why my ex is my ex, because they would never help me. Your heart is played with usually more so here with a covert than with an overt narcissist. So what do they think that you owe them just because they are who they are? Number one, all of your time and attention. Once you get roped in with a narcissist, your time is no longer your time. You were on their time and you essentially work for them. You need to be at their beck and call 24-7, and if you're not, there will absolutely be hell to pay for it. On the flip side, when they're busy, remember they can't be bothered with you. This is why a narcissist chooses you in the first place. One of the main reasons is right here, your time and attention. That's what a narcissist will always and forever be after, is a never-ending source of supply. Therefore, of course, they have to have all of your time and attention. You are here to devote your life to them and give them every single solitary second that you have. Number two, money and assets. If you have money, if you got cool stuff, they want it. They want it all, frankly, and they also feel as if you don't deserve it. You don't deserve what you have. They do. A covert already thinks you have too much. Therefore, you don't deserve any above and beyond of what you have. The overt wants it all because, well, why wouldn't you? They're a celebrity, after all. Narcissists will always feel entitled to what you have because, again, you are nothing more than an extension of who they are. You work for them. You are on their time. You are not a partner. You're not a friend. You are essentially staff. If you'd like help and support from a survivor on what you're going through, you can set up private one-on-one chats with me by sending an email to bookachatwithjess at gmail.com. Number three, safety and security. A narcissist feels that your responsibility to take care of them when they're sick, when they're down and out, whatever. They always depend on someone else to bail them out when they're in any kind of trouble. They will even go to people that, (laughs) frankly, they don't even like when they're in a tight spot and always feel it's the other person's responsibility to throw them that life preserver and get them out of trouble. When I was hoovered in my situation, the narcissist had lost the apartment that he was living in and moved in with his brother. I was told throughout the course of our relationship, the few things I did hear about his brother, he hated his brother. (laughs) His brother was an asshole. He didn't even want to talk to the man, but... You see, when times got hard and he wanted to start dating women on the other side of town, where his brother is, 
guess who he looked up and reached out to and got super buddy-buddy with? It will never be in the nature of a narcissist to take care of themselves. That will always be somebody else's responsibility to supply them with everything they need. This is why I believe partly they need so many different sources of supply. They need more than one person to provide all these things. A narcissist is always aware that some people are going to fall out of the harem. Some people only supply so much and they always need more and more and more. Some narcissists actually have lives, two full lives with different people, two different homes and two different bank accounts to pull money from. And then everybody else in their harem who they use for sex and money and attention, there will never just be one person. The harem literally exists because there is never enough for a narcissist to take. I relate it to feeding a black hole. What happens when you feed a black hole? It never fills up. It never gets what it needs. There's never enough. Actually, the black hole only expands. Number four, power and control. Frankly, you aren't good supply if you don't hand over power and control to them. They want and need this badly in all of their relationships. They need to know and feel powerful. It helps give them that ego boost. And they need control of everything, micromanaging everything and everyone. Your refusal to hand this over and basically take a back seat and let them run your life will result in punishments. They will lash out at you, perhaps become physically violent, block you, ghost you. Sometimes they will even completely discard you and go find somebody else and move on because you need to give them these things, power and control. Regardless of what happens, they need to have the control. And you can basically wrap this up in a nutshell by saying you are responsible to take care of quite a bit for them in the relationship or even a friendship. Everything I talk about, while it is mostly having to do with romantic relationships, it stems farther. Coworkers, family, children, friendships, they treat everyone essentially the same way. You are a source of supply. The sense of entitlement is a key, key sign of narcissism, along with the main sign that I talk about, which is the lack of empathy. If you see this level of entitlement, but it's also paired up and connected with They don't really care how their selfishness and neediness affects other people. They don't care that they're running someone ragged. They don't care that they're draining a bank account or or living with somebody and it's causing an issue there. These are big problems that point pretty closely to narcissism. So what else does a narcissist do that they feel super entitled to do? What else do they want? What else do they feel like just belongs to them just because? I only wanted to mention some of the more common things here, but we all know they use people for plenty of other things, status and sex and things like that. So tell me all about it down in the comments. Please subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your support. Have a great day, Survivor, and take care of yourself.